Hi everybody. Okay, so what I want to talk to you today about is I found something on discover.tv uh, from NASA. A new energy system basically working out of the concept of the CERN LHC basically could propel a spacecraft to Mars in three days. Now, that's actually very, very fast, and I wonder whether or not everything would hold up that long. Because very weird things happen at the uh, LHC all the time to where they have to shut down the reactors, shut down the big magnets, shut down lots of different things and everything else. Now, the picture that I'm showing here actually reminds me of a Project Orion that NASA claimed to have had in the 70s. This project, as you well know, I'm sure certain parts, certain groups of you know, was actually based on a nuclear explosion process which would propel a ship uh, through space and they would be able to reach the several planets at once and return to Earth within like a, I don't know, three to five day, uh, three to five day grouping. I think they reached like supposedly I don't know, Jupiter and Uranus in like something like 10 days because they ran into trouble and had to spend like half a day fixing something, some pipe broke or something. So that's what this actually looks like. It looks like the spacecraft from Project Orion or Orbit, I don't know, something like that. So when they talk about this kind of thing, I wonder if they're not just going to break out old technology amp up the uh, the training videos as live feed, quote-unquote, and, you know, kind of go from there. So, you know, the best thing about this stuff is that, you know, if it's worth doing, they've already done it, folks. They're not waiting around for you. They've had trillions of dollars. We literally have spent enough money to have colonies on every major planet, and we probably do, and every major solar system, every major functional exoplanet, we probably do. Under some agreement, one way or another, a colony of probably 20 to 60 human beings are probably living on some quote-unquote foreign visa program. I think that's actually what NASA calls them. And I've been trying my my heart is to get my NASA buddy to tell me what the foreign visa program is because that's actually what it is. That's what I've heard it actually is. You got to go to, well, first off, you got to prove that you actually have, you know, the capability of going off planet. And I think I'd fail my medical and I'd get screwed on it. But basically, you have to qualify for a certain foreign visa program through. NASA and the State Department or something. And at that point, you're issued um, some kind of clearance. It's temporary. And basically from that, you basically, you know, get on board one of these programs and you go aloft. I've talked about an uncle that lives in Florida who went missing from the family for about 10 years. Uh, he was supposedly working for the Air Force the entire time. He supposedly was off-world, supposedly, twice. Uh, what I basically understand is... He went through some program or another where he became a technician of sorts. Uh, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of like an analyst type uh, 
type program. And he got really high up and did a couple of good jobs in Japan and several others. And he basically applied for one job. They, they denied him. And then basically he was pulled into one of these other programs. And he said uh, he was in one planet. It was, uh, and I, I've done the looking, and it's hard to know whether or not, you know, he, he's telling you the truth, whether or not it's a complete lie, or whether or not he's basically trying to cover himself as to where everything is. But there is supposedly a solar system out near Orion's belt. One of them is supposed to be a basically uh, prisoner exchange planet, if you will. And he was with the Air Force basically exchanging humans. And he basically was basically a corrections officer type, but he, he was more along the lines of an analyst and in charge of logistics. I uh, said he was allowed to venture, you know, into the different areas, but he was restricted due to uh, various things, especially, you know, it being a hostile environment. Uh, he said that the language was not very hard. The language of the civilization was not very uncommon, that, you know, two or three weeks you couldn't pick up at least some dialect and, you know, mingle with the locals. And he said he was on another planet around Sirius A. And he says that was supposed to be uh, very close to, uh, what did he say? I'm trying to think of the reference he used. He said it is very, very, very similar. And they think that Lucas got this idea from that actual planet was, um, he didn't describe it as Tatooine, but he said, you know the bar environment where Han shot whatever the guy's name is, where you had like the jazz band and you had all the mixed groups? He says, it was a lot like that. I can't tell you whether or not that's true. I would imagine anybody high up you know, you would never be able to be allowed into the areas where, you know, it's that diverse. But he said that that assignment was actually very open. It was a very peaceful planet. And the way they kept it that way was, you know, basically saying, you know, you can come, but if you mess up, you're on your next flight out, and do not bother to come or bring people here again. And people who did show up kind of learned to get along. So, that's why I'm bringing you this here. And I'll give you the, the uh, insiders into this. But, anyways, this original concept came from a NASA scientist or NASA engineer, I hate the word scientist, NASA engineer Philip Lubin working on a system of lasers which propel spacecraft supposedly with giant sails to the red planet, but down at the bottom he actually talked about a better way of the using a large hadron collider type propulsion system which would basically get you there in days. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. And I don't know, my uncle said he had it written down and stuff. He claimed he had photos, but, you know, just like when you come back overseas, you have gold and various things taken from you. I guess when you're on those assignments, Photos and pretty much everything else are taken as well. So, what he has, he says he'll release upon death. But, who knows? Right, right.
but he was missing for about seven years and I have yet to actually get the Air Force to release his records or for him to you know go in the background and search for him and just to see what they would actually say thank you